Welcome to Red Roof Family Farm in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. We grow a half acre of cut flowers and veggies that we sell here at the farm and down at our local farmer's market. We are getting ready for our Halloween farmer's market, which is very exciting because it is the last market of the year. And even bigger than that, it's the end of our third season growing. So it's, it's an exciting milestone. We are really proud of how much work we have been able to achieve in the last three years. When we first came here on this property, it was just a field. There was nothing. And you know, over, over the last three years, we have been able to slowly have more and more growing space, be producing more and more for our local community. It's, you know, it's, it's a moment to be proud of how much we've achieved and also to be excited of how much we're going to, you know, do into the future. In honor of the completion of our third year of farming, we set up a comment box in our roadside stand so that our customers could give us a little bit of feedback on what they think of what we're doing here. So let's go check that out now. Kids must have been playing around in the farm stand and filled the suggestion box with all these dead flowers. Thanks for the flowers. Don't work too hard, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. You guys work too hard. We are all so worried about you, JJ. Don't worry about us, JJ. We're all good. I've seen your videos. You both talk too much. Cindy, guilty as charged. Wish you lots of luck. You'll need it. Veggies are yummy. I can't believe you actually bought this house though. We will still support you when you move. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. Have you seen him yet? I could never live in that house. Do your research. That's the old Acton farm. That's kind of cool. We've been looking for the history of this place. So, you know, a name is a good place to start. Your kids are cute. Get out while you can. I love my bouquet I bought from you. It lasted forever. Too bad you won't. Sincerely, Sherry. Weird message, Sherry. I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty weird one. Stay out of the forest. That's where he lives. What about flower face? This one just appears to be covered in blood. Pretty sure that's a health violation. Our house is one of the oldest houses in Western Canada, and we would love to be able to know more of the history. So we're super excited to have a name. We're gonna head down to our local museum and find out more about this Acton family. We are here at the Lake Country Museum and we're trying to track down some information on this guy that everybody's talking about. So let's see what we can find. Well, I got all the details and what a crazy story it is. So buckle up for this one. Inside the museum, I dug up some old records that shed light on our property's dark history. Our protagonist in this story is the man who originally built this farm, Archibald Acton. Archibald was born in Kent, England on his family's orchard in 1857. He was said to be born with garden shears in his hands, which he used to prune his own umbilical cord. Archibald was a difficult child, hardworking with a natural green thumb, but with violent outbursts. His family was known as the Apple Barons, but all their money and power couldn't stop the local townspeople from demanding vengeance when young women kept disappearing. Archibald fled to the newly formed nation of Canada, eventually settling on our Kelowna property to start his own farm. By then, British Columbia had joined Canada with the promise that it would be connected by rail, traversing the imposing Rocky Mountains. The railway would eventually be completed in 1885, and the last spike was driven down in place not far from Kelowna. 
Queen Victoria herself came across the Atlantic for the maiden voyage of the first passenger train. With the culmination of a grand ball, which will be held at the spot of the last spike, where Queen Victoria would be the guest of honor. Archibald Acton obtained the contract to grow all the flowers for the entire ball due to his family's long allegiance to the British crown, his successful entrepreneurship, and the mysterious lack of other farms putting in competing bids. As the big moment drew close, his farm was flush with flowers. He effortlessly grew whatever he pleased his whole life. It was like he could communicate with plants, talking to them as he sipped his morning tea. But for once, Archibald found himself the victim of fate. As only a week before the Grand Ball, unseasonable and unusually hard frost hit the region unexpectedly and wiped out every single flower from the entire farm. Archibald snapped and was erratic and inconsolable. The night of the party, the queen left her rail car and upon entering the hall was heard to say, "'Tis a bit dreary, isn't it?" At which point she retreated back to her train car, muttering about how this country of riff-raff castaways don't know how to throw a party. Word of the queen's displeasure reached Archibald, and his anger turned to rage. He donned a mask of dead flowers. His dear wife attempted to console him, but he could only curse fate. Her body was found in the basement of our house, and Archibald was last seen running into the woods, never to be seen again. But every year on the night of the first frost, in the nearby forest can be heard screams of horror. Some say it's merely the dying cries of a deer overtaken by a pack of wolves. But others know it's old Archibald Acton cursing fate's cold touch. Locals refer to this legend as Flower Phase. I took a picture of Archibald Acton when I was at the museum. Show me, show me! The end of the season is always a time for reflection for us. And this being, you know, the third season that we've completed farming, uh, you know, it's just fun to look back at all these years that we've been here now. It's crazy to think about, you know, how much work we've been able to achieve in that time. Mm -hmm. You know, and also it, it doesn't feel like three years. The time is, has flown by. We're working together and we're, we're building this, you know, really, really nice life. It's also a great place and a great lifestyle to raise our kids up in. They love being on the farm. Yeah. I'm really proud of Serena. You know, three years ago before we started doing any of this farming stuff, both of us had no farming experience. You know, Serena was a, a stay-at-home mom, and before that, she worked in a shoe store. So it's not like we had the background for this. It's not even like you had had made a lot of flower bouquets before, but now you are literally influencing people's love of flowers and veggies around the world. It's impressive that you've you've just taken on the farming and the floristry so well, and you've just like done such a good job. I'm super impressed with you. She's just very motivated to succeed and that makes it easy for me to you know help her out with the things that I do right so um, it's been it's been a really fun three years working with Serena. And I'm just so proud of how much work Ian gets done here on the farm too. The reality is I wouldn't be able to get anything done if it wasn't for Ian. You know, he's, he's out there doing the hard physical labor, you know, often at the absolute worst times of the year, like in the end of the winter, you know, doing those really heavy physical jobs that I can't do. But beyond that, you know, even just the time that I spend in the field doing those smaller, you know, we say Serena jobs, I wouldn't be able to do that if he wasn't there being, you know, such a supportive partner. All this farm is built on the backbone of him. One thing that's really surprised me about starting a farm, you know, they always say don't start a business with your spouse, is I feel like working together has really strengthened our relationship. You know, we have this thing that we're both 
working together towards, you know, we, we have this common passion and common goal and it means we always, we always have something to talk about. You know, we always have, have things to be excited about together. And for me, I feel like it's given our lives a bunch of purpose. You know, there's kind of nothing more meaningful than food which feeds you and then you know, the flowers are there t for like smiles and happiness. We're doing that together. So like, I just feel like, you know, I've, I've never been so in love with you as I am now. I love you too. But this farm isn't gonna harvest itself. So it's time for us to get to work. I am very excited. This seems incredible that at the end of our season and still picking fresh flowers, this is, this is a treat for sure. surprising how much we're able to pick out of here you know there's there's way more sunflowers than what I've already picked and I've already picked more than I expected to find I still have some of these purple kales which I love but I think we'll probably with how many sunflowers we have we'll be using the last of them this week Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Stupid. This day has disappeared on us. The kids, you know, is, is just one of those days when you get nothing done. So it's late now, but we have the kids in bed. So we got, we got a chunk of time. You know, it, it doesn't matter if we have to stay up till the middle of the night. We're gonna get this harvesting done. We're gonna get the work done. Cause you know, this is our last market. We, we gotta, gotta finish on a bang. So we gotta get to it. We, you know, definitely feeling the crunch at this point. I still have so much harvesting to do. I didn't really get any of the harvesting done today. So it seems like it's gonna be a really late night and a really early morning tomorrow. I haven't even started to load the truck yet or look through any of this, you know, the marketing gear. Here's my plan. Let's make this a divide and conquer uh, harvest. I am gonna go and I'm gonna finish up the last of the flowers and Ian, Let's have you go and get the kale done. You know, once we get that, that's at least a, a start. What I need now is a music montage. Go, go team. team. I got all of the Swiss chard finished harvesting. So now I'm gonna get this into the fridge and I'm gonna check on Ian and see how he's doing. Hey. I was just coming to look for you. I got all the kale finished. If you wanna go grab that, then I'm gonna go check some of that merchandising stuff. What the, what the heck is this? What is, what is this supposed to be? Um. What? Like, what? 
What? What, what are you doing? Just going through my checklist. No, what, what, what is with the kale? Like, that's not what do you funny. Mean? What do you mean? The, oh. I'm, I, I harvested the kale. You saw me. Yeah, I'm there's literally a bin of, like, stupid dead stuff out there. I don't know what you're talking about. I harvested the kale. You're probably just looking at the wrong bin. I get it. Jokes. You're playing a prank on me. Not, not but, playing... but you know what? The, like, you can say whatever you want. I don't know what you were doing down there other than oh, setting up the I stupid bin of dead stuff. There's no kale there. Well, All there is is a bin of dead stuff. Then. You're doing it wrong. Whatever. I'm like, we need yeah. to actually get some work I'm done. Do, I am doing I'm doing this. You know what? Whatever. At bin. least, at least I'm going to get something done. Oh, whatever. I don't know what Serena thinks is going on. I just harvested the kale down there and it's all ready to go to the market. Like sometimes she just gets like this. She gets so worked up. Uh, it's it's frustrating, but like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to have a talk with her about it though. I'm just, I'm so frustrated with Ian right now. You know, I love him because he's hilarious. That's definitely one of his best traits, but he just, he can't not be making jokes. And you know, we just, we don't have time for him to be doing pranks. This is just, this is not the night for it. I, I just, I just wish he would like, take this a little bit more seriously. Like he, we need to get to bed. I am pretty impressed with what I have here for cut flowers. It's incredible that I was able to make this many. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful wife who grows beautiful flowers. Do you want me to film you making a bouquet? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, let's do it. As I was saying, I, I still can't believe how much I was able to pick. End of the season and you know, the, there's so many sunflowers, there's so much stuff to work with. I'm gonna be bringing a lot down to the farmer's market, but let's throw together a bouquet. This is scented geranium. Um, it keeps really good in the vase and it has a lovely scent to it. Uh, and it's apparently frost tolerant because <laughs> it's very happy. But I'm thinking use this as the base of a bouquet and then maybe a grass and then sunflowers. These have lots of leaves. And then these yellow sunflowers, pretty lush. These are strawberry greens, and they turn this like beautiful, bright, glowing fall color. You know, so we could just pop, pop a little touch of color into there. Flowers fit for the queen. We'll do something with some pinks in it. The status is loving the cool weather. The grass. These grasses, the coloring is very pink. These, um, they're like plum. Juicy. Yeah, let's do the juicy slums nice. artichoke. Grasses. Start filling in with the sunflowers. I forgot about the sedums. No problem. And that's definitely twenty dollars. Done. Look at that. Pretty incredible to be able to throw this together at this time of year. I'm pretty excited about how these are turning out. They're, you know, I think these are gonna sell for sure. It's after 11 now and there, we still have so much more work to do. I still have to do a lot of harvesting and you know, we just, it's like we got so much work to do tonight. It seems like it's going to be one of those no sleep markets because I have to get up really did early. You, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard something. Oh, it's just a cat. No, I don't know. I'm like, I definitely heard something. Sounds like footsteps. Like, Um, excuse me. What? Like, what, what did you do with my flowers? I didn't do anything. With your you flowers. know what? 
You know what? It was bad enough with the kale, and now do and now you're messing around with my. You know what? Okay, I'm, okay. I'm 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 so I'm gonna go I'm, try. I'm, I'm so over. You, go you have, know what? Right? These pranks that you do, I'm so, so over it. You know what? I don't know why it has to be like. Ian? Why are you knocking my bins down? I gotta load the truck. They, they like just fell out of the truck. I was like, I was in the field. Like you, I, I, I don't even, I don't even know what's going on. I, I don't know how this happened, Ian. What I do you just, mean, I, Serena? I, I the bins don't just fall I, out I of the don't. truck. What, what are you talking about? What's going on? There's something seriously wrong happening. I'm just, I'm getting really scared. I just, I, I, what, what I don't. That? I hear something. There's someone down there. There's something down there. Ian. Right there. Ian, no, don't run too far. Don't, Ian. We, we, don't, please, Ian. Fine. There's nothing. Let's get back to work. What, what do you What do you mean? It's fine. What do you, what There's you, nothing. What, you were chasing Let's get something. Get back to work. What do you mean it was nothing? You You were chasing something. Wait. What, what do you mean? What do you What do you? It mean? was nothing. We have to get this work done. Well, I don't know what that was about. You know, super creepy. It's not like Ian to, you know, be like chasing after something like that. And, you know, it's it's not something that he normally would do. So, I don't know. You know, it's just weird night. You know, like, and but he really he's right, right? We like we need to get this work done if we're if we're ever gonna get. If we're ever gonna get to the market, we we do need to get back to work. So I don't know. I mean, sometimes we have like coyotes and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's what he saw. But I better go. I better go find him and see what it is that he's like up to at this point. Yeah, you were down here. What, what, what are you doing down here? You have kale. I, I thought you said that we didn't have kale anymore. I found some. You found some. What does that mean? Well, we are finally starting to make some progress on this harvest. Ian found some kale whatever that's supposed to mean so we got that done and i got some garlic bagged up so you know those are a few more things in the bag oh ian just walked in here that's perfect hey uh i i need those flowers it's it's starting to rain out so i need i need to get those wrapped up they're in the forest in the... okay I, I need you to go get them before they get rained on yeah in the forest Ugh, seriously Feeling pretty good. It is about 12.30 now 
and we're actually getting there. We're, we have most of the harvest done at this point. I haven't seen Ian in a little bit, so I have to do a check-in with him to, to figure out what he's up to, but I, I, I don't know where he is. Ian? Ian's acting really weird, but it's so late at this point, you know, like, we're, we're kind of getting into the one o'clock point, so, you know, it's not too surprising. He, he had an early morning. So, but the, the good news is he told me we have everything harvested. Um, so the only thing that is left for him to do is that he needs to get the truck packed up. I have still a few like bits and pieces that I'm gonna get together. I'm getting the dried flowers. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. So then, you know, he'll be able to go to bed because, you know, it's, he's, he's acting really weird. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about him. He's not normally so like spacey like this. Like, I don't know. Tired. Seriously, we need to get you into bed. Well, Ian is <laughs> exhausted, clearly. So I've sent him off to bed. He's gonna go get some sleep and I just have a few things left and then I'm to bed too. So I don't know. I don't know how this market's gonna do. I don't know what's gonna go on, but I guess we'll find out tomorrow. We're down in the market. We finally made it after the worst harvest ever. I'm honestly not feeling very positive about how the market's gonna go. You know, I, I don't know what we have to sell. Things are pretty limited. And you know, the harvest just went so badly. I really suspect this is gonna be our worst market of the year. No, Serena, we're gonna have our best market ever because Flower Face is here. It's been about a week since the ghost of Flowerface has taken over my husband, and I gotta say, it's been going really well. Our last market of the year ended up being the best market we have ever had. I thought we'd only brought down a thousand dollars worth of stuff, but somehow we ended up selling almost two thousand dollars worth. Flowerface was incredible incredible with customers such good customer service so charismatic like he can really sell and back on the farm he is getting so much work done we we've never been able to achieve what we've achieved in this past week ian used to always be on his phone flower face he doesn't even know what a phone is and he's so 
good with kids. The kids are just loving them. And this might be a little bit TIL, but his lips are really spicy. Honestly, at this point, I can't wait for next year. Flower Face is gonna make us a successful flower farm.